One of the things that I learned when I first moved to St. Clair, because it's so clear and visual and shallow, is you find a lot of fish that never strike your bait with smallmouth. Smallmouth are different than largemouth, if you think about it. And I, don't want, I wasn't going to really go into this too much, but if you think about like most of the attention that bass fishing gets, or the way that we learn, we learn from magazines, we learn from time on the water, we learn from TV shows, we learn from videos, and even that's changing now. You know, so much stuff's on social media or on YouTube or on the internet. You learn from, there's so much stuff on the internet. But 90% of it is about how to catch a bass in Alabama, <laughs> Texas, that's got a mouth this big, that's a large mouth. They're completely different than catching a small mouth in 20 foot of water or even in shallow water in, you know, the Northeast. Completely different. Smallmouth fishing for big smallmouth on the Great Lakes is as different as largemouth, traditional largemouth fishing, say, in the Southeast, as flipping mats for largemouth in Florida is to catching tuna offshore in Massachusetts. <laughs> right? The boats are different. The tackle is different. The method is different. The way the fish act is different. The way they school is different. The way they feed is different. The way their bodies are is different. Smallmouth don't sit behind a stump, wait for something to go swimming by, come flying out, open their big gulp mouth, suck the bait into the back of their throat, and then go back down in the stump where you wrestle them from cover. Smallmouth chase stuff and terrorize stuff. Am I about five minutes? Okay. So when you approach them, you approach them differently. If you get around an area that's got big schools of big smallmouth, even if they don't bite, nine times out of ten, one of them will chase you back to the boat. Think about it. You know, when you, in a lot of the big concentrations of big fish that I've found, say, practicing for tournaments, whatever, have been a result of using a bait that covers a lot of water or one that gets smallmouth to chase it. Like this big, crazy colored spinner bait. Jerk baits. Smallmouth have a tendency to love to follow things that go like this in front of them for some reason. It's like a cat and mouse thing. Big top waters. If they show you where that you can. We fi I fished in Chautauqua Lake, New York. I don't know if anybody's ever been there in western New York. Fairly medium-sized lake. Awesome big smallmouth fishery. Fishing in October. Catching nothing. Should have been killing them. Should have been killing them. Just got fed up and started just winding a big spinnerbait and had one fish follow my spinnerbait. And for the next two days, I think we caught 90 fish over four pounds within a cast of that spot with a rider. That looks good when you're with a rider. <laughs> He goes, we're catching the same fish over and over. And I'm like, I don't think so. Um, so, so that's a little bit. Let's, let's keep going. I only got five minutes. I don't know how much more I got on here. So, so use baits that cover a lot of water. Um, a little bit about, you know, hooks, rods, line, you know, all, all this stuff. I, I, wish I, I wish I had a little more time to talk about that um, because I think it's important. But the same mentality. Think about where you're getting your information and think about the source and what they're talking about. Catching smallmouth on a rattling lipless bait is completely different than catching largemouth from the way they hit the bait. Has anyone ever fished for smallmouth and been winding a crankbait or a big fast bait and felt the boom boom like one hits it or the little flutter or the little movement and you kind of vary your retrieve, maybe speed it up real fast or kind of slow it and bam, you catch one. Has that ever happened to you guys? Okay, chances are a lot of that time, that fish never hit your bait. In today's day and age with, with high-tech rods and line and everything that goes along with it, a lot of times crankbait fishing, I'll actually feel fish that come and push my bait or swarm around your bait and, 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 and kind of stop the water flow over the bait. That's that little dead feeling like, whoa! Bash you, folks. Information is pouring over. If you want to learn more about every lake, how to fish shallow, deep, in between, skipping docks and rocks and cranking, slow wiggling, chatter smattering, you get it at Bash U. Get on Bash U TV, check it out, sign up, be a member, be part of it, folks. Keep learning.